Hey everybody, welcome back. John Lavendis here, We're talking about some statistics. Uh, for the next couple minutes, I'd like to talk to you about some statistical measures of a relative position. Um, basically what that means is, how did you do compared to somebody else? Um, your relative position uh, compared to them. You see, uh, a lot of statistics has to do with describing the overall distribution. Like you've got a massive set of data and you'd like to know what is the average of that data or what does it look like? How, how um, widely spread out are all those data points? Now that has its place, but sometimes you want to know about a particular data point um, and to find out how unique is it. Is it roughly in the center? Is it far out? Is it way up at the top of the spread and so forth? You want to know its relative position. There are uh, two common uh, measures of relative position, the percentile and the z-score. And those are the ones we're going to focus on today. So um, percentiles should be familiar to everyone that's taken the SATs or the S uh, ACTs. They basically ask, um, you did better than or equal to, so better than what percent of everybody else? So for example, if you scored a 1300 on the SATs, is that a good score? Uh, yeah, it's pretty decent actually. Um, so according to the SATs, um, a score of 1300 puts you at the 86th percentile. And what that means is that 86% of all the people that took the uh, SAT, 86% um, of people that took the ACT did as good as you or worse, which uh, another way of saying that is that 14%, only 14% of, of SAT takers did better than you. Um, so yeah, that, that's I'd say that's a pretty good score. Um, if you scored uh, 1,000 on the SATs, is that a good score? It's okay. It's not great. Um, that puts you at the 40th percentile. So 40% of people did as good or worse than you which is to say that 60% did better than you. Well, you know, that's useful information to know. If all I did was told you 1,000 without that added context, you're not really quite sure how to take that news. So the percentile offers a lot of useful information. Percentiles also let you compare apples and oranges, which is like some kind of statistical wizardry and is pretty cool. Um, so let's say that you took the SATs and your sister took the ACTs and you want to know who did better. Now on the face of it, these are two different tests. They're graded on two different scales, um, apples and oranges. Now if it's true that um, the, the range of people who take the SATs is similar to the range of people that take ACTs, uh, then we can use percentiles to compare your scores with your sisters. So for example, let's say that you scored um, a 1200 on the SAT. Then that's a 74th percentile, which is really solid. You did as good or better than 74% of the uh, entire um, SAT taking population. If your sister scored a 23, that would put her in the 69th percentile. So now you can compare those two percentiles because those percentiles are now on the same um, basis. They're not apples and oranges, they're both percentiles. So you did better than your sister because 74 is a bigger percentile number than 69. So cool, right? Now, um, if, uh, if you're not told your percentile um, and if all you're told is your SAT score, uh, you know, without those tables, uh, you, you don't know what percentile you're at. Um, you'd need more information. You'd need some context. So if all I told you was you got a 1200 and there's no conversion table there, what do you do? Uh, well, it'd be great if you had some data to work with. So if you had a thousand uh, random people's SAT scores, then you could count to see how many people did as well or worse as you. Um, you could just estimate your percentile that way, just kind of by hand. Um, or you'd need some other kind of context, like the mean and the standard deviation of the SAT scores themselves. So you don't need the actual data, you could use some summary stats 
to help you figure out where you stand. Um, so if you have the mean and the standard deviation, and then also if you know that the SAT scores have like this rough bell-shaped curve that looks like, you know, that classic bell shape, then you can actually estimate those percentiles for yourself. Um, and I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, now the, the other uh, thing that you can do, uh, other statistic that you can use to estimate your relative position is something called a z-score. Um, and z-score doesn't uh, answer how better did you do than everyone else, it asks how much better did you do than the average, which is really kind of a similar uh, question. Uh, now it's not going to tell you you did you know five points better or two percentage points better. Um, it's going to use uh, a standardized unit um, that's kind of a little strange, right? You don't normally think in terms of this unit. Those units are standard deviations. In other words, standard they're kind of should be a tip off. Uh, we're not used to thinking in terms of standard deviations, so z scores require just a little bit of practice um, before you can develop an intuition for it. Um, but let's say that you're told that the average score in your school was a thousand and you scored 1100. How much better than average did you do? Now if that's all that you know, all you can say is you did 100 points better than average. So you, you know you did better than, you know, 50% uh, of the population. Uh, presuming, you know, like this symmetric bell-shaped curve. Uh, but that's, that's it. We need more data. Now let's say that you're told all of that stuff, but that you also know that the standard deviation is 100. Now what can we do with that information? Okay, well, how much better than the average did we do? 100 points. And what's the standard deviation? It's also 100 points. So how many standard deviations better than average did we do? We did one standard deviation better than average. That's the gist of what a z-score is. Um, and we'll be able to translate that z-score into percentiles too. You'll see that in a sec. Here's another example. Let's say that the SAT score in your school is 1,000, you scored 1,100, but now the standard deviation is just, you know, for the sake of argument, let's say that it was 50. How much better did you do? You did 100 points better than average, but how many standard deviations is that 100 points? That's now two standard deviations. So you would say you did two standard deviations better than average. In other words, the standard deviation is kind of a, a yardstick. It's like this measuring rod. And, you know, like, let's say it's, you know, this amount. Um, in fact, let's not even use the word standard deviation. Let's, let's just call it blah, blah. All right. And let's say that, um, that this is a blah, blah. Okay. Now, let's say that you are this much taller than average. How many blah blahs is that? That's about two blah blahs. That's two standard deviations. That's the game we're playing here. Um, so it, if you wanted a formula for this, uh, how do we how do we calculate that this was two blah blahs better than average? Well, I need to know how much am I actually better? How many points better? So my height versus the average height, I subtract the two and I get this distance. And then I want to know how many blah blahs fit into that. In other words, I want, I want that difference to be denominated in standard deviations or in, in blah blahs. So, um, so put that in your denominator. You want this difference here denominated in standard deviations. So you would put that in the denominator, right? That word is like a really big tip off. So we now can convert how much better we are than average, but not in SAT points anymore. Now we can convert that to standard deviations better than average. Now, z-scores also allow us to compare apples with oranges. Let's uh, start a new example. Let's say that you uh, you took the SAT and you got a 1355. It's a good score. 
um, the national average is actually closer to 1055. Um, and the standard deviation is approximately 200. So you did, you did a lot better than average. Um, you did 300 points better than the average, right? 355 minus 1055. That's 300 points better than the average. But how many, how many blah blahs is that? How many standard deviations? Well, let's denominate by the standard deviation. So 300 over 200 is like 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So you did one and a half standard deviations better than the average. That's a lot. Now what about your sister? She also did better than average. She scored a 26. That's, uh, that's five points better than 21. But what does that mean in terms of standard deviations? Well, it turns out that the standard deviation for ACT scores is a lot closer to 5.4. So when we denominate by 5.4 units, we get something that's uh, a little bit um, lower than 1. As a matter of fact, it boils down to 0 0.93. 0 0.93. So you only did um, almost one standard deviation better than the average, or your sister did. You did one and a half. She only did 0.93. You did better than her. You get bragging rights. Now we can use z-scores to estimate percentiles. Actually, if you have your z-score, you can look up at um, a standard normal table and directly read off the percentiles. They're in the back of every single stats textbook that's out there. Um, there are online calculators to convert from z-scores to percentiles. Um, but if you know that the distribution that you're looking at is roughly normally distributed, then you can use the empirical rule to kind of ballpark what those percentiles would be. So um, in the example we just did, you scored a one and a half uh, standard deviations better than average. So what would your percentile be? Now without looking at a table, right, we want to be able to estimate percentiles. We can use the empirical rule, right? So we know something about how standard deviations are related to percentages from the empirical rule. So let me, uh, let me draw out what the plan of attack is. You, um, <laughs> it's not a very good drawing, but we can figure out what the percentile is for a z-score of 1, do the same thing for a z-score of 2, and then just go to the middle, average those two, and ballpark what the percentile is for your particular score. So we draw um, a very clunky looking normal distribution and we know for the empirical rule that if we go out one standard deviation from the center, right, so plus one and minus one standard deviation, we've accounted for 68% of observations, which means that 32% of observations are unaccounted for. And since the normal distribution is, is symmetric, right, it's, it's, it's symmetric around zero, then the remaining 32% um, that's left over from the 68, those have got to be split up between the left tail and the right tail. So 32% um, so split left and right means that 16% are in each tail. And so the percentile for, for one standard deviation above the mean is 68 plus the 16%, which is um, 80 four percent right 16 plus 68 let's do the same thing for plus or minus two standard deviations let's see if I can draw this better now yeah so plus and minus two standard deviations this accounts for 95 percent of observations so 5% is unaccounted for, which means 2.5 has got to be in this tail, and 2.5 has got to be in that tail. So the percentile for a z of 2 has got to be 95 plus 2.5, or 97.5. Now, your score was 1.5. 
So it's going to be, the percentile is going to be somewhere between these two percentiles. So let's just average them. And we get, let's see, 84 plus 97.5, divide by 2, and we get approximately 91%. That's a pretty good percentile score, I'd say. Basically, only 9% of folks did better than you, according to our little ballpark estimate. And if we actually consult a statistical table, um, the, Z, uh, the percentile for a Z of 1.5 is actually 93%. So our estimate of the truth, you know, our estimate was pretty good. So um, I'll have another video um, just working through a lot of examples on calculating percentiles from z-scores without using the tables, just using this, um, you know, uh, back of the envelope type ballparking estimation. Um, so check out that video. Thanks for your attention.